and welcome to CF Online. My name is Gabby Vargas. And I'm Chad Anthony. And we are so glad that you're joining us today. If maybe it's your first time here or maybe you haven't connected with us, be sure to check out cfmiami.org slash online, where we'd love to give you all of our resources and help you get connected. So be sure to fill out that connection card there. You know, it's been great also seeing all the different posts on social media using the hashtag at home with CF. What a great way for us to feel like we have community and some togetherness while we're social distancing. So keep posting, keep using that hashtag. It's a great way for us to, you know, connect. Yes, and you know, our Sea of Kids have also been connecting through our Sea of Kids Hangouts that have been happening this past week at 7 p.m. We have loved to see them grow in their relationship with Jesus, mm -hmm. and I've also heard from several parents that they're eating all the snacks. Oh, all the snacks. Yes, Chad, what's your favorite snack right now? Well, I've been trying out tuna and crackers. I know it's weird, <laughs> but what about you? What's your favorite snack? I am loving the little cutie mandarins. What gets better than that? They are jam-packed with vitamins and they're juicy. It's been great. Hey guys, why don't you let us know what your favorite mm -hmm. go-to snack is in the comments below or in the chat. Well, Pastor Carlos is actually with us today. He's bringing part three of our Unsolved Mystery series. But first, let's join in in a time of worship. Let's lift our voices and sing out. Hey guys, my name is Joey and I'm one of the worship leaders here at Christ Fellowship and I'm here with the CF worship team and right now in this next moment we want to invite you and encourage you wherever you are, whatever platform you're worshiping on, to worship with us, to read the lyrics, to sing the lyrics, to believe the lyrics that God is on the throne, he'll never leave us, never forsake us, he's always in control. Let's do this together.
drinking in this place I worship you I worship you Let's sing that again You are here Moving in our midst I worship you I worship you You are here Working in
death had claimed its victory The king of love had given up his life The darkest day in history There on the cross they made for sinners For every curse his blood atoned Final breath and it was finished But not the end we could have known For the earth began to shake And the veil was torn What sacrifice was made As the heavens roared Jesus, come on. you in this moment 
We're so thankful for all that you're doing and all that you've done, God, in our lives and through this church and in this city, God. We are expected to see what you're going to do, God. We believe you're still on the throne. You are still in control. No matter the circumstances that we may face, God, we place our trust and our hope in you. We love you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Wow, we are so glad we got to worship together in our homes. And can you believe it? Easter is around the corner and we want to share God's love with as many people as possible. Mm -hmm. And so we created a special experience for each of the members in your family. You know, before we move on, we invite you to text CF Easter to 313131. You're gonna receive a link to download an invite. And we're asking you to share that with your friends, your family, just about everyone in the community. And speaking of community, our church has been reaching out and serving our community. Yes, that's right. Our church got to partner with Feed America this past week, where we hosted a food drive through and we were able to provide food for over 500 families. Mm -hmm. It was amazing to see that not only were we providing for their physical needs, we also were able to provide a spiritual need as we prayed and ministered with them. Family, it's because of your giving that we're able to serve these families that are not sure where their next meal is coming from. You know, Gabby, I was out there with them and I'm so grateful for the 30 plus volunteers who were out there serving with us in that great sun. But it's because of your giving that we're able to be the hands and the feet of Christ, especially in a season quite like this. Now, how can you give to Christ Fellowship? We're gonna invite you to go to cfmiami.org slash give. There you can give now, but we're gonna ask you to also think about setting up a recurring gift. You can do so by visiting cfmiami.org slash give. With that said, I'm gonna pray for us as we get ready to give. Heavenly Father, I'm so grateful that you are God all by yourself. Right now, Lord, I'm so thankful that we have a place where you are, you are enriching and maintaining this storehouse and how you're using us to be a lighthouse in the community. Help us to keep marrying our wisdom and our faith as we navigate this time. It's in your name we pray, amen. Hey everybody, welcome to Christ Fellowship Church Online. And thank you so much uh, for joining us this weekend. My name is Carlos and I serve as one of the teaching pastors here. So whether you are watching us from your living room, maybe you're sitting down on the couch or perhaps you're in the kitchen making some breakfast or maybe you're in your office watching from your laptop, we wanna say thank you for being a part of our experience today. We also wanna remind you uh, that we have an incredible kids ministry. And so if you are a parent, uh, we have an experience just for the kiddos. Make sure that you tune in and watch it online. It is amazing. And I wanna give it up for all the kids, directors, and volunteers. You guys do such an amazing job. And we also have a powerful, incredible student ministry. Middle school and high school students, make some noise. There where you are, come on, get loud. If you're hanging out at home, get loud. Uh, make sure that you're tuning in uh, to our services. Well, today uh, we wrap up, we conclude a series that we've entitled Unsolved Mysteries. And we've been going through the book of Colossians, verse by verse, chapter by chapter. And so if you have your Bibles, uh, today we're actually going to go uh, to the chapter 4. We're going to go to chapter 4 uh, just for this weekend because it talks about the mystery of, mystery of Christ. Uh, next weekend, we're going to go back uh, to chapter 2. And here's what the Word of God says in chapter 4, verse 2. Continue steadfastly in prayer by being watchful in it with thanksgiving. Then Paul says, at the same time, pray also for us that God may open to us a door for the Word to declare the mystery of Christ. Walk in wisdom towards outsiders, making the best use of the time. Amen? Amen. Well, that is the word of the Lord. You know, this crisis that we are in the middle of, COVID-19 global pandemic, it has affected every single one of us. Some have been affected by it by a much larger scale and others in a much smaller scale. But every single one of us, we've been affected by this crisis, especially in the area of our schedule. Every single one of us, our life cycle, our, the rhythm of our lives have been affected. Whether you are young or old, 
whether you are a male or female, whether you are well-resourced or not well-resourced, all of us, our time and our schedule has completely changed. You see, my wife and I, uh, we have uh, three, three beautiful children, and we've been married for many years, and we have a six-year-old, a five-year-old, and a two-year-old, and we received an announcement that completely changed everything in our home. We found out on March 13 an announcement that drastically changed our, our life in our home. On March 13, we discovered that all public schools, and including the private school that my kids go to, Christ Fellowship Academy, was closed. And at that moment, my wife and I looked at each other and we said, oh no, we're going to have to quarantine with all of our three children. Listen, I love being a dad, and it is a blessing to be a dad. I love being a father. I take a lot of joy in it. But if you want to test your patience, if you want to test your sanity, if you want to test your salvation, oh my goodness, be in quarantine with three children under the age of six. I'm speaking to a mom. I'm speaking to a dad. You know what I'm talking about. You can say amen to that. You can lift up your hand. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Our home goes from being spotless, beautiful, clean, no blemishes. The floor is absolutely immaculate. And the next minute, the three hurricanes make their way into the living room, into the dining room, and in just a matter of a minute, it becomes a disaster. It becomes a storm. All the clothes is on the floor. The toys are everywhere. They're making a mess with their food. My wife now went from being a stay-at-home mom with our daughter, Everly, to now being a full-time homeschool teacher. And it's one assignment after the other. And get on this video chats. Now you have to eat lunch. Now I have to clean the kitchen from the mess that you made. Now you got to do this project. Now you got to turn in this test. Now you got to turn in this assignment. And she's going one thing after the other. For me, at our church, we've had tons of meetings. And all the meetings, obviously we're practicing social distancing. All of our meetings have been done through Zoom video chats. We've had a plethora of Zoom video chats. We've done so many Zoom video meetings that I am dreaming with quadrants. In my dreams, I see the grid that you see in a Zoom video chat. That's how many meetings we've had. And then I'm out there trying to buy food and things for my family and trying to buy toilet paper because BJ's has toilet paper or Costco has paper towels. And I'm out there with my mask even though people are making fun of me, I don't care. I am trying to be as cautious as possible, trying to buy things for my family. You see, in this crisis, for my family and I, our time has become very limited. And because our time has become very limited, Shawnee and I, we've tried to do the best that we can to make the most of our time. And maybe that's you today. Maybe you're in the same boats. And your time is very limited, and you're trying to make the most of your time. Or maybe you're on the other spectrum, and you're like, Pastor Carlos, I have tons of time. I have so much time to waste. I don't know what to do with my time. But here's what I want us to know. In fact, I want to bring all of that story to our teaching for today. Because just like Shawnee and I are trying to do the best that we can with the limited time that we have, in the same way... In fact, if you are taking notes, this is our big idea for today. As followers of Jesus, our time on this earth is limited. And we are called to make the most of our time. Because our time is limited, we're called to make the most of our time. Now, you might be thinking, Pastor Carlos, how do I make the most of my time? What is it that God is expecting for me to do? What we're going to find out today as we navigate through this passage in Colossians chapter 2, Colossians chapter 4, verse 2. So here's the first point that I want you to write down. If you're taking notes, make sure you're writing this down. Make the most of your time by praying. 
Make the most of your time by praying. Here's what the Word of God says in Colossians 4, verse 2. Continue steadfastly in prayer by being watchful in it with thanksgiving. Now, we've told you before that we've been going through the study of the book of Colossians, verse by verse and chapter by chapter. And so if you're joining us for the first time, I want to give us a quick overview on this book. The Apostle Paul is writing this letter to the church in the city of Colossae. And as he's writing this letter to the church in the city of Colossae, he's actually in prison. He's actually in jail for sharing the gospel of Christ. And so this church in the city of Colossae, it is made up of new believers who are trying to walk in the things of God. And so Paul is telling them, our time is limited here on this earth. And this is how you make the most of your time. And here's what the Word of God says going back to Colossians 4.2. Continue steadfastly in prayer. There where you are, you can say the word steadfastly. Say it like you mean it, steadfastly. If you're taking notes, I want you to circle or underline that word. We've told you many times that the New Testament was first written in Koine Greek and then translated into other languages. That word means to be devoted, to be constant, and to place a lot of attention to. In other words, what Paul is letting us know, and he is telling the church in the city of Colossae, is that when it comes to your prayer life, this is not something that you're just flippant about. This is something that is so crucial and important to walk in the things of God. Be devoted to prayer. Be constant in your prayer life. Be consistent when it comes to prayer. Be watchful. Be thankful. You know, those words that Paul writes, he writes them in the year 60 AD. Theologians believe it was about that year, about 30 years after after the resurrection of Jesus. Those words were so powerful back then, and they're so powerful for us today as we go through this COVID-19 crisis. What is it that you're devoted to right now? What is it that is captivating all of your attention? Perhaps you are devoted to the news and the media. Fox News, CNN, ABC, all the different news stations. Maybe you're devoted to that and perhaps that's the reason why you are filled with anxiety and worry and concern. Or perhaps you have been devoted to social media, all the comments and all the opinions of other people, the negativity of people is filling you with concern and worry and anxiety. What is it that you're devoted to at this very moment? Because here's what I want you to know. The enemy is always out there to attack steal and destroy, and especially during this crisis. All of us, were in quarantine. One way or another, you are being affected by this. I heard someone say this the other day. Hey, Carlos, if the virus doesn't get me as a parent, my children are going to get to me. And you may feel that way right now. Pastor Carlos, my husband is getting to me right now. He's getting on my last nerve. Hey, I get you. The other day I was barbecuing. I I love to barbecue. If you know me, I love to grill. I grill ribs, chicken, steak, anything. I even put pizza on the grill. And I was barbecuing and my children were in the pool and the barbecue was right next to the pool and they were having a good time. Noah, my six-year-old son, who is our oldest son, he's there messing around doing the things that six-year-olds do and he was splashing water. And I told Noah, 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 stop splashing water because you're getting some on me. He's splashing water. I'm like, Noah, Noah, stop. So I'm grilling this incredible piece of churrasco. And all of a sudden, my six-year-old son, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, gets a little bucket of water, and he throws it to me. And not only does it wet me, I don't care to be wet, he gets water on my steak. I'm grilling food for our family, for you, Noah, Nathan, Everly, and my wife, Shawnee, and he gets water on my steak. At that moment, 
I have a confession. I lost it. Oh my goodness. I said, stop it. <laughs> Don't judge me. I, I, I'm just telling you, I'm being honest with you. Hey, some of you can, can, can know exactly what I'm referring to. I said, stop it. I screamed so loud that I think all my neighbors on my street heard me screaming to my son. More than ever, church family, we need to be devoted to our prayer life, which is why the Apostle Paul says consistently in the book of Colossians, we also thank God when we what? Pray for you. Colossians chapter, nine, ver, chapter 1, verse 9. For this reason, since this day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you. 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, the Word of God says, Pray continually, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. You know, when we pray, we go to the source. You know, isn't it interesting that in this crisis, all distractions have been eliminated? We can't watch sports, men. We can't watch football, basketball. All has been suspended or postponed. Ladies, you can't go to the mall. You can't go to Nordstrom or Macy's or Bloomingdale's or Forever 21, wherever store you go to. All the malls are closed. You can't get your nails done. Everything has been, all distractions have been eliminated except Netflix. I know some of you have been watching Tiger King. I know that. All you young people, older people watching Tiger King. Some of you have had so much time. Not only have you watched an episode of a show, not only have you watched a season of a show, not only have you watched an entire show, some of you are like, I've watched all of Netflix. I don't have anything else to watch, Pastor Carlos. I have no idea. You know, and several weeks ago when this started getting really serious here in our city, in our country, I was on my Instagram feed, and I went to Instagram, and I was on it, and I was scrolling down Instagram, and all of a sudden, I see a post that I thought it was a rumor. I see a post that I thought it was a meme, and it said the NBA was suspended. The NBA was suspended. I knew at that moment, wow, NBA suspended their season. This is serious. So I screenshot it, and I sent it to our leadership team, and I said, guys, look, even the NBA is suspending their season for now. Pastor Omar tells me, nah, nah, that's a rumor. That's not true. And I said, yeah. Look who posted the content. Look who put it on their Instagram feed. It wasn't just so random guy or it wasn't just, a, just another play. It was, it was Sports Center. And because it was Sports Center, it can be trusted. Because it was Sports Center, we knew that that source was valid. We knew that what it was saying was accurate. As you worry right now, as you are filled with anxiety, as you are filled with concern, as you are filled with uncertainty of the future, what is the source that you are running to? Are you running to the source of God Almighty, Jesus, who will never leave you nor forsake you? The Word of God says, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of the death, I will fear no evil. Do I go through this COVID-19 season? I will fear no evil. What source are you running to? Is it a source that can be trusted? Is it a source that is valid? Is it a source that you can place your confidence in? Are you running to the source? Be devoted to your prayer life in this COVID-19 crisis. Here's the next point that I want you to write this down. Make the most of your time by being missional. By being missional. Look at what the Word of God says in Colossians 4, verse 3. Paul writes the following. At the same time, pray also for us that God may open to us a door. If you're taking notes, I want you to circle that word door. In the New Testament, whenever you read the word door, it means opportunity. Pray for God to open us an opportunity for the word to declare the mystery of Christ on account of which I am in prison. Interesting. 
Paul is now telling the church in the city of Colossae, he first tells them, make sure that you're devoted to prayer. This is how you make the best use of your time. Now, pray for me. Paul is in prison. Paul is in jail for sharing the gospel of Christ. He is in the ultimate quarantine. He can't move anywhere. He is locked up with chains on his wrist and ankles. And Paul doesn't say, hey, church in the city of Colossae, please pray for me so that I can get out of this quarantine. Please pray for me so that I can get out of this storm. Please pray for me so that I can get out of this situation. Please pray for me so that I can get out of this prison. He doesn't pray that. Is it wrong to pray those things? Absolutely not. No. But Paul says, please pray that I may make the most of my time and that may God open a door, an opportunity for me to share the gospel of Christ in the midst of adversity, in the midst of his situation, in the midst of his trial. Paul is in jail. He's thinking about the mission. He's thinking about the gospel of Christ. Here's what I want all of us to get. If you're watching us right now, you can quarantine people, but you can't quarantine the gospel. Let me say that again. If you're watching us right now, I want you to be focused right now. You can quarantine people, but you can't quarantine the gospel of Jesus Christ. And listen, we may not have the cure to the virus yet, and we're praying about that, but we have the message. We may not have the cure, but we have the answer. We may not have the cure, but we have hope. And all of that is found in one person alone, and that person is Jesus Christ, God Almighty. Jesus is who we place our hope in, in times of adversity. I am preaching to somebody today. You can say amen to that. Because even though this situation that we're going through, that we are in the middle of, is, is different, it has changed our life, the message is still the same. And the message of the gospel is a message of security in times of uncertainty. The message of the gospel is the message of peace in times of anxiety. The message of the gospel, the message of provision in times of scarcity, the message of Jesus is the message of comfort in times of anguish. Now, I'm not telling you now to get out of your home and knock on someone's door. Pastor Carlos told me that I got to tell others about Christ, so I'm going to come and share the gospel of Christ. No, no, not at all. We practice social distancing. We're going to submit to our governmental leaders. You see, the message has not changed, but the methods change. The message is the same, but the method changes. You know how you can leverage the gospel, the mission at this very moment? Leverage your, your social media for Jesus. I know a lot of you are all up on social media. You got a lot of time. I see it. I discovered a social media platform during this quarantine called TikTok. A lot of our students use it. I guess I'm not cool enough or, or young enough to know about it. I know our students use it, and Cat Perez and Andy and all these other people use it, all leaders and, and people like that. Listen, I get it. And I've seen some of you, if you by the way, if you're, if you're going to do uh, TikTok dances, make sure you, you, you can dance well. I've seen some dances, I'm like, are you serious? you got to delete that. Make sure you can dance. Men, if you're doing push-up challenge, make sure you're doing push-ups well. <laughs> make sure that you are, are going all the way down. Listen, all that is cool. I'm not telling you to stop doing that. I'm not telling you. What I am telling you. Leverage your social media for the gospel of Christ. Right now, it is not the time for us 
to give our political opinions about something, whether you are on the right side or the left side or the middle. Right now, it is the opportunity for us to use the social media to tell others about Jesus Christ, that there is hope, there is a new life, and there is peace in Jesus. Leverage your social media for the things of God. Another way that you can be missional in this time, reach out to your family and friends. Reach out to your coworker, do a Zoom video chat with them and say, hey, you're in my heart. I'm thinking about you, Joey. I'm thinking about you, Melissa. How can I pray for you? You know, what's interesting is every time I've asked people, how can I pray for you, whether they follow Jesus or don't follow Christ, I always get a very positive response. People love, for whatever reason, well, I know the reason because there's power in prayer, but people love to hear that statement. How can I pray for you? You know, as we go through this COVID-19 crisis, isn't it interesting that it is in the middle of Easter season, the pinnacle of our faith as believers, the climax where Jesus resurrects from the grave. All of our faith is clinched on the resurrection of Jesus. Next weekend, we're going to celebrate Easter in a major way. You know, as a pastor, Easter weekend is my favorite weekend. And although we're not going to be meeting physically in our church, we're going to have a beautiful, beautiful experience online for the adults, kids, and students. Here's what I love. Our church, we love to resource our people with the tools to invite others to join church online. Here's what I want to do right now. I'm going to get really, really practical. If you're sitting on your couch right now, maybe you're watching from your office, I want you to take out your phone right now. Every single person, take out your phone at this very moment. If you're watching us from your phone, don't do this yet. Do this at the end because I want you to experience the entire message. We have a special element for you in just a moment. But here's what I want you to do. I want you to take out your phone, and I'm going to do it myself, and we're going to go here. Okay, got a lot of... And you're going to text, you're going to go to number 3131. So it's 313131. And then you're going to text the word CF Easter all together. Hit that. You're seeing my phone. This is my screen. I'm actually doing this right now. And I'm going to be waiting for the response. So you're going to text the word CF Easter together, the number 3131. 31, and I'm waiting. I'm still waiting. You know, our Wi-Fi, there you go. So here it is, Christ Fellowship. Thank you for your text. Please click this link for a digital invite. So you're going to click the link. Very easy. And then you're going to get the different invites that we've created for you and your family. We have English services, Spanish services, services in ASL as well, uh, Good Friday, Easter for adults, students, and kids. And so you're going to click there. And now you're going to click on it and add to photos. Now it's on your photo album. Very easy, very simple, easy way uh, to invite someone. So I encourage you to do that right now. So make the most of your time during this season by being devoted to prayer and make the most of your time during the season by being devoted to the mission. And here's the last one. Make the most of your time by caring for your soul. By caring for your soul. How is it with your soul right now? Maybe some of you are anxious. Perhaps many of you are worried. Maybe you're watching this right now and you're like, Pastor Carlos, I am anxious and worried and I'm afraid. I'm starting to feel symptoms. I'm starting to cough. I have a light fever, a low fever. And perhaps you're afraid of what may happen to you. Perhaps you're afraid that you may transmit the infection, the virus, to your spouse or to your children. Or maybe you're afraid and uncertain of what may happen to your job. Perhaps your husband got laid off, your wife got laid off, and perhaps you're the next one to be laid off you are afraid of the future. You are uncertain 
of what's going to happen to you. Or maybe you are concerned about what's going to happen with your business. You're filled with fear of what you have to do with your business. Perhaps you might lose your business. Or you may have to let go of employees that mean so much to you. And you are afraid. Child of God, I want to tell you something right now. It is normal to feel moments of fear. It is normal to have moments where you feel anxious and you feel concerned and you feel overwhelmed. It is normal to experience those moments. However, as a child of God, we may experience moments of fear, but we're called to not live a life filled with fear. You may be concerned, but don't be consumed because God has given you not a spirit of fear. He doesn't say God has given you that you won't experience fear. He says God has given you not a spirit of fear. You're going to experience moments of fear, but he's given you a spirit of love, self-control, and peace and joy. And I love what Paul says in Philippians 4, 6, and it's so fitting for us right now. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things, live these things out, and the God of peace will be with you. God not only promises to overwhelm us with his peace, but he also says, the God of peace will be with you. I give you my peace, and I give you my self. That is the God that we serve. That is the God that we worship. I've shared this story with you guys before, but I think it's fitting for what we're going through now. In the 1800s, there was this man by the name of Horatio Spafford. He was a Christian, Christian lawyer, very successful man in every word, that you, every way that you can think of. He was involved in the mission. He served his church well. He served his wife well. He served his children well. But he started going through tragedies and difficult season in his life. To begin with, his only son, he had three daughters and a boy, his only son passed away from a devastating illness. As a father, I can't imagine going through something like this. The worry and the anxiety and the mourning and the sadness that he felt at that moment that he discovered his son passed away. Later on in his life, his different law firms were affected by the Chicago fire. He lived in Chicago, him and his family, and many of his properties, many of his business were burnt away. Money that he had invested in. And to make matters worse, later on in his life, his wife and his daughters would go on vacation and he would stay behind in the city of Chicago. And while they were in the ship, he would receive the notice that the boat that they were in had suffered a collision and his three daughters at that moment had passed away. The only one that survived was his wife. First he loses his son, then he loses some of his businesses, and then he loses his three daughters. At that moment, Horatio Spaffer would get on a boat and he would begin to make his way to his family. And while he was on that boat, he would write these words that have ministered and have brought comfort to so many people in difficult times. He would write the following, Whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well 
with my soul. Thou hast taught me to say, it is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. In the midst of tragedy, in the midst of adversity, in the midst of a heavy storm, he experienced the supernatural peace of God. And even though he was hurting, even though he was in pain, he would write those words, although it is chaos all around me, although the world is falling all apart all around me, because I have God, it is well in my soul. It is well. How is it with your soul? Maybe you're hurting. Maybe you're suffering. Maybe you're filled with anxiety. How is it with your soul? In fact, here's what I want us to do right now. There where you are, I want you to, if you're alone, you can join us. If you're with your family, you can hold on to your spouse, to your wife. If you're with your children, you can hold hands with them. We want to end this time praying together as a church family. We want to end this time singing this beautiful hymn to our Lord. And so I've asked Joey to lead us in this time right now. There where you are, let's sing together. My
Father God, we just come before you, God Almighty. That is who you are. You are the way maker, promise keeper, miracle worker, Lord. And God, right now, I just pray for all those who are joining us today, God. Lord, I pray that you may consume them with your peace and your joy and your mercy and your grace in light of our anxieties, in light of our worry, in light of our concern, in light of the uncertainty of the future. God, remind us, Lord, that you are good and you are sovereign and you are still in control, God. Help us to be devoted to prayer. God, help us to be devoted to the mission, God. There is a message that you have called us to spread, especially in this season, Lord. So, God, I just pray for every single person right now, God. May you protect their hearts. May you protect their minds. Lord, I pray for our country. I pray for our world. I pray for our governmental leaders, God. May you give them the wisdom. God, right now, I pray, Lord, that through science and through wisdom, God, that you may provide the wisdom for a cure for a vaccine, Lord, that will help us eradicate this deadly virus, Lord. I pray for those who have family members right now that are infected by this virus. Lord, may you bring healing to their body. May you bring healing to their organs. May you bring healing to their lungs. And may you bring comfort and peace in this very moment. We trust you, Jesus. It's in your holy and precious name that we pray. Amen and amen. Love you guys. Love you, Christ Fellowship. What a great message from Pastor Carlos. Family, be sure to visit cfmami.org slash online if it's your first time and fill out that connection card so we can help you take your next step. Also, don't forget to text CF Easter to 313131 and let's share Easter with everyone. I'm so sad that service has concluded for this weekend, but good news is that we'll get to see you guys again next weekend at CF Online. Bye everyone. <laughs>